the high functioning village idiot talking about having gone to many schools over the years. I went to kindergarten in 1964-65, fall of 64, spring of 65, when we lived in Wappingers Falls, New York, close to the Hudson River, uh, tiny little town really. Um, directly across the street from where our house was on Channingville Road was a gigantic YMCA camp that was only open in the summer for about two months and the rest of the year it was pretty much vacant. On the far side of it was a house that a man lived in and he was sort of the caretaker of the facility. Uh, he and his family lived way on the other side of it but over where we lived there were lots of these small log cabins and uh, a little museum that had Native American artifacts and masks and so forth in it. Uh, it was in disrepair then, uh, so I'm presuming that it had maybe had originally been built in the 20s or maybe 30s. Uh, some of the buildings were, were caving in, barns were in bad repair. Um, but it was a fascinating place to live across the street from and play on when I was four and five and six years old. Our, our house was, was surrounded on uh, two sides with forest. There was a tall water tower uh, oh, only about 150 yards from our house up on a hill. And uh, I went to kindergarten in a building half of which was a firehouse and the other half of which was a large room with a door in the front and a door in the back and I seem to remember my dad driving me to school. I don't remember riding a bus there. Uh, my teacher's name was Mrs. Donato. She was an older lady. Uh, I remember her being quite nice. Whenever the sirens went off because there was a fire alarm somewhere and the trucks started pulling out uh, we would always immediately exit the back of the classroom onto this big grassy field with a little forest behind it behind the school for recess. Um, this happened a few times a week so we got extra recess because there was also a scheduled in recess. Um, this was the school where I first got in trouble in school for, uh, it was I think it was around Halloween and I had a friend this girl in the class who asked me to um, to do Halloween a Halloween face on her with magic markers, which I did, um, but they were permanent magic markers, and her mother was very upset. And uh, I got a good stern talking to about that. I remember we used to take the Iowa tests of basic skills there. Uh, the next year we were still in the same house. I went to another school, Sheaf Road Elementary School. I think it was a pretty new school back then actually. Um, I don't remember the name of the teacher that I had there. Uh, it had a lot of uh, grassy grounds all around it. There was a stone wall behind it. I remember us flying kites there during the school day. Uh, I remember being told to sit in the corner quite a bit by the teacher I had in first grade for whatever it was that I was doing that was irritating her. Um, very vague memories of that school. Of course, I've, I'd had a pretty large life trauma the summer before. Uh, when I got assaulted by somebody in the woods up behind our house. I think maybe first grade was a bit of a blur for me. Um, let's see, Dad got promoted in 66 by Oscar Meyer, and we moved out to Indianapolis, Indiana, much closer to the uh, home base uh, of the company. And Dad had a large account there, and I attended Brook. Park Elementary School, second and third grade, which is where I learned to defend myself. Well, I didn't really learn to defend myself very well, but I had to do it a lot. Um, 
being from so far away uh, and being the new kid. Uh, we lived in a massive sprawling suburb um, on Kenyon Drive, I believe it was called. Um, I walked to school, cutting through people's properties and stuff diagonally in order to get to it from where we lived. And uh, you know, I had a grit paper route there. And uh, that's where I got my first two-wheel bicycle. Um, that's where I heard Sergeant Peppers when a babysitter brought it over one night, blew my mind. Uh, I was about eight, seven, something like that. Uh, if you look at this map, right about where the words Indianapolis, Indiana are set over the image is where a tornado passed by one time when we were living on Kenyon and it cut right over toward the school and we missed some school because of damages that happened to the building and uh, let's see that's where I was a Cub Scout my mom was a den mother and my dad was an assistant troop leader um, while we lived there I always thought of it as very dry and dead and dusty and nowhere near as green as this photograph would have you think. Um, it was another new school. My second grade teacher's name was Mrs. Klopfenstein and my third grade teacher's name was Mrs. Shook. Well then we moved back to New York State again, another promotion for dad. Uh, right into the inner city, but we weren't living in the projects. We were living uh, upstairs in a two-family home in a much older part of the city, um, which had once been a pretty ritzy part of Syracuse to live in because it was right adjacent to Onondaga Park, this lovely old turn-of-the-century park um, postcard thing with a lake, and you could rent boats and row out onto the lake and there were stone arch bridges over creeks that ran through the park, big swimming area, tennis courts um, and there was a firehouse in that park where uh, a real old one from a, back around 1920 um, brick thing and uh, us kids used to hang around up there with the firemen all the time when I was little. They'd let us slide down the pole they had one of those old soda machines where for, I believe it was 15 cents, the glass bottles would pull out and there were these strange metal fingers that were locked until you put your money in and a little hinged glass door on the front. I went to Roberts Elementary School for fourth grade, which was right in front of uh, Corcoran High School uh, during that year. 1968-69 there was a riot that broke out in the high school in which every emergency vehicle I could think of at that age came rushing to the high school because of fires and people being thrown out windows and cars burning, buses burning. Um, it's possible that one or both of my cousins Susan and Sally who also lived in Syracuse, my dad's nieces, um, may have been students there when that was going on. A lot of racial unrest in, unrest in Syracuse back in those days and it was, things were breaking out in schools. I remember the intercom in fourth grade, the principal came on that day and said uh, to, the, to the students in the school and the teachers had already had us go get our, you know, our, our coats and so forth. Uh, and the principal came on the, uh, intercom and said uh, students if you ride a bus I want you to get up right now and go out and get on your bus and for those of you that walk to school we want you to get up right now and run home strangest principles announcement of my life um, pretty cool place to live I remember a friend's older brother had the first mothers of invention record freak out the cover flipped me out when I was eight, nine years old. Um, yeah, Roberts was one of those old brick schools from uh, back in the day. With lots of sunlight. And then we moved from Syracuse, the city, out to Liverpool, New York, a suburb of which was called Bayberry, 
another big sprawling suburban place to grow up with uh, lots of grassy areas and uh, basketball courts and places to swim and a river and a lake and parks each summer the uh, all the Ivy League schools would bring their giant long crew boats down to Onondaga Lake for a regatta and on the north side of uh, Onondaga Lake there would be about a two mile long party all along the shore of the lake where people would just pull in there with their vehicles and grills and blankets and kids and have a real day of it watching those races out on the lake. We lived there from 1969. Well, my folks were there until 96. Um, I guess you could say that was my home base from 1969 until I joined the Navy uh, in 82-83. And it was a lovely place to grow up. Um, my first year there was at Craven Croft Elementary School. Uh, I think it had probably been built in the mid-50s. And I uh, went there for fifth grade, had a teacher named Mrs. Hurst. Then I went to middle school at A.V. Zog Middle School down in the village of Liverpool. This was the, it was, it was probably about four, five miles away. I remember me and my friend Jim Irwin all through seventh grade used to race our bicycles because we both had 10 speed bike, bikes by then from Bayberry to uh, Zog, weather permitting. And uh, one day when we did that, a flood happened <laughs> and we had to push our bikes about three blocks to get uh, to a place where we could ride them because there was almost three feet of water all around the school and the streets around it and stuff. Had a lot of great teachers there, uh, metal shop classes, wood shop classes. It was quite fun. Really enjoyed that school. I think everybody that went there back then enjoyed it. Great fun. Then went to Liverpool High School. Huge. I think there were 5,000 of us there. <laughs> then, at the very crest of the baby boom, my younger sister, Liz, who's uh, four years younger than me, well, actually, she must have been the year of the crest of the baby boom because that year, this school, which was humongous, um, actually had to, uh, I suppose, annex Morgan Road Middle School beside it and they turned it into the ninth grade annex and the entire ninth grade filled what used to be a middle school and then the rest of the high school here was 10th, 11th and 12th grade. I think there were almost 800 kids uh, who could have graduated in my graduating class uh, in 1977. Liverpool High School was great. Uh, immediately went to State University of New York at Potsdam, or SUNY Potsdam as they call it, way up in the North Country, only about 25-30 minutes from the Canadian border, close to the St. Lawrence River. Um, uh, a lot of New York City's electricity is produced at a hydroelectric plant just about 20 miles from Potsdam. Uh, you know, one of the old teacher colleges from 1900 or so that grew and bloomed into a gigantic, uh, sprawling place with a, the, the finest music education school in America, some say. Um, really nice athletic facilities, fabulous art department, psychology, uh, all of the humanities, sciences, philosophy. Um, and in a place that just can't be beat in the autumn when it comes to colors, uh, the leaves and the trees and the sky. And uh, it took me five years to get a four-year degree because I twice left to go work and earn enough money to go back. Uh, once to Rochester for about nine months, Rochester, New York, and then another time for about six months to Houston, Texas. Um, but I finally got out of there with uh, uh, double major in uh, English, literature, and uh, visual arts. Studied printmaking, painting, ceramics, all sorts of things. Well, I had debts. Had to take out some loans. I think I owed about $10,000 back then. 
and uh, a buddy of mine had just gone into the army to become a helicopter mechanic and he was talking about what that meant uh, you know money wise and benefits wise medical dental things like that and so I started talking to recruiters and very soon enlisted in the Navy where I was going to go off and become what they call the linguist at the uh, recruiters I was going to learn a foreign language and use that uh, in the service of uh, national intelligence and security. Um, they sent me off to San Diego, California to uh, <laughs> do the basic training thing. I think it was, a, all, all things considered, it ran about two and a half months. We were a drill company, which meant that we were the group that was going to be conducting the graduation ceremony when it was all over, you know, spinning flags and guns and marching around in formation and all that kind of stuff. Um, then I went to Goodfellow Air Force Base way out in Texas, southern Texas, southwestern Texas, I guess, not too far from Mexico for a number of months learning how to use all kinds of uh, things that plug in uh, that are used for uh, recording and um, uh, safekeeping and um, analyzing various kinds of information. Uh, tech school, very technical, lots of fun. Um, huge snakes and rabbits when you walk the perimeter there. I remember living pretty much on these little pizza bagels I used to make using the microwave oven when I was there. Uh, then I was off to Pensacola, Florida, uh, where I went through the Air Crew Candidate School there and was taught how to do my job um, on aircraft of various kinds. And this was basically, oh gosh, so it was about two and a half months of non-stop phys ed mostly, um, including boxing and running in dry sand and swimming and, you know, be simulating having a parachute land on you on top of you in the middle of the ocean and uh, simulating being in a helicopter that goes down in deep water um, where I very nearly drowned actually during that training because of a faulty buckle on my harness. <laughs> oh geez, boxing, obstacle courses, it was pretty fun. And I knew some of the guys that were there uh, that I had met in Monterey. Here's a picture of Monterey. Uh, this is where I learned Korean for a year and a half. And uh, a lot of us ended up in these other schools together um, because even though we had, we'd been taught different languages, we were going to be using the same kind of equipment to deal with those languages. Um, next school the Navy sent me to a couple years later was uh, for submarine training so that I could do my job on uh, underwater as well. And this was in another part of Pensacola, not too far down the road. Um, this is where I saw Bill Hicks perform at the NCO club one night. Um, absolutely hysterical comedian. Uh, Let's see, uh, August of 1990, I separated from the Navy at the end of two four-year tours, eight years in, decided I didn't want to make a career of it because it was affecting my first marriage and we were thinking perhaps that was the problem. Well, it wasn't. Um, and a couple of years later, I found myself single again, nonetheless, and uh, decided to go back to school. And this is where I went. I was living in Massachusetts working uh, at a company called Plastican as a printing supervisor, shift supervisor in the printing department. And I went to this Fitchburg State, it, I think it was called Pitt Fitchburg State College back then, maybe it's bigger now or something because they call it Fitchburg State University now. Lovely little campus up on a hill uh, in an old mill town. And uh, this is where I got my middle school and uh, high school teaching credentials. Um, this is where I completed half of a master's degree in clinical special education. 
Um, this is where I was helping edit and publish reviews of young adult literature, new young adult literature that was coming out um, under the tutelage of Dr. McCaffrey, who had a great journal uh, that was coming out of this college for, you know, middle school fiction and stuff. Uh, this is where I was an upward bound summer counselor um, helping uh, kids that were deemed quote at risk unquote um, finish high school and not cave and bail out. Um, and this is where the band Coffee happened. This is where I met all of the crazy guys and girls from the barn uh, which was the uh, <laughs> this off-campus place that had a band in it called Calathump uh, that some friends of mine played in. Uh, two houses away my band Coffee, kind of a hippie jam band. I was the old guy in the group, um, rehearsed. Sometimes Coffee guys would play in the basement of the barn with Calathump guys. Great fun. Uh, I remember one winter going to the barn and the entire first floor of the house had about two inches of ice on the floor. Um, they'd let the tubs and sinks overflow because they wanted to play hockey in the house and they left the windows and doors open and I went there and these guys were playing hockey in the living room. It was pretty amazing. Um, Fitchburg State, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, really neat town. Uh, Johnny Appleseed was from that area. Well, yeah. I look back on that whole mess of places to learn things as having been in all a very good experience.